In case you didn't know, flow rate topology is now included in your Maya 2026 installation. Just a little FYI for you there. So flow rate topology works just like Maya's retopologizing tool to simplify your complex geometry on your models. But you may have found that retopologizing takes a massive amount of processing power, particularly for complex meshes, because it's all happening locally on your machine. So while it's processing, you can't do anything else because your computer's using all its resources for that. But flow rate topology uses remote cloud computing to process those mesh operations, so you can carry on working while it's processing, because your computer is still free to give that process power to whatever else you're doing in your scene. You can also run several retopologize operations simultaneously to save on time. Say a yes to meeting our deadlines. If you want to check that you have flow retopology installed with Maya 2026, you can see it right up here in the toolbar, or you can go to Windows, Settings and Preferences, Plugin Manager, just look for flow retopology.py. You see here it says loaded and it's also checked for autoload. So let's get crackalackin'. So I've got this little fun guy I made for this demonstration. I'm so sorry for that awful joke. I don't know what came over me. So he's obviously not complete and he has really dodgy topology, which will be worse after I combine the meshes with booleans. I'll also need to sculpt some more details, but for now I want to combine meshes and then I'll retopologize the result with flow retopologize. So to combine the meshes, I'm going to use the new Boolean mode in Maya 2026, which is the volume mode. It's really great for organic shapes, and what's more organic than a little man of fungus? The reason I say it's great for organic shapes is because the place where the meshes intersect get a smooth, natural-looking transition instead of hard edges, all while maintaining quads and giving you even topology, and it's really nice for creating complex shapes. I'm selecting the meshes that I want combined, so I'll select the arms, eyelids, and body. Then here under Mesh, Booleans, I'll use Union. Click the little option box. I'm okay with all these settings as they are, and you can also change them retroactively. So for now, I'm just gonna apply and close. And see how nicely that's combined. You'll see I lost some detail by the eyelids, but you can change the voxel size here if you need more or less detail. Obviously, the voxel size does affect performance. Smaller sizes increase detail, which makes the scene heavier. You can turn off interactive update to help the performance a bit. You can also change the geometry mode. You can make changes to the mesh, and it'll also update without messing up the boolean. Although I do suggest increasing voxel size to do those kinds of changes, and then decreasing it once you're happy to save on performance. Now to read apologize. Let me hide the other meshes so I just have my combined one here. I'm going to go to flow up here. You've got create new job and open job monitor here. We'll first create the job, then open the monitor to see how it's going. Over here I've got the name of the selected mesh and it shows me the current face count, which as you can see is disgusting. Way too high. And a job name you give your job a name. The default name is the mesh object name, but it's better to give it a more specific name. You don't want to end up getting confused. Naming and correctly labeling is live. And over here, pick your output location. The default is your current project directory, but you can choose anywhere you'd like, really. For target face count, you can put anything in here, obviously equal to or lower than your current face count. I'm going to make mine a lot lower for obvious reasons, but we'll see what kind of result we get. This doesn't mean you'll get exactly that number of faces. It's kind of just a ballpark to aim for. It's recommended not to go below 60 to have a good result. So our options here, topology regularity. This is where you set the number of singularities, which you'll probably have a lot of in a mesh that needs retopologizing. A singularity is a vertex with an unusual number of edges, which is pretty much anything other than four. In clean quad-based topology, most vertices connect to four edges. So singularities can mess up your edge flow. So when this is set to zero, it produces more singularities, but you may keep more of your details. But set to one, you have fewer singularities, which is better for your topology, but you may lose some fine details. But if you're gonna continue working with your model anyway, doing details and stuff, then what ifs, you know? But this is totally up to you and your specific workflow. So do what works for you. Face uniformity refers to the overall size and shape of the faces. So if it's set to zero, there's less uniformity, and there will be, for instance, smaller faces in areas of higher curvature, 
but when set to 1, the faces are more uniform, regardless of the curvature of a surface. Anisotropy refers to how the faces adapt to the directional curvatures in the surface. So when set to 0, the faces stretch less, and when set to 1, the faces stretch to adapt to the surface's curvature direction. If the uniformity is set to 1, it won't make any changes. Here in Feature Preservation, you can choose if you want to keep hard edges if you've set any in your model. If you don't have any hard edges, you can just leave this off. If you have too many, it will increase processing time, so just keep that in mind. Edges by angle. When you have this on, it'll preserve edges based on the angle tolerance. So if an angle between faces goes over the angle tolerance you specified, it'll preserve those edges. So you can use this if you don't want to actually define specific hard edges. And then edge component tags. You can define your edges with component tags, pretty much the same as how you would define your hard edges, and just put the tags in here. In symmetry, you can specify even edge flow on both sides of your mesh, and under axis position, this is where you choose what symmetry plane you want the symmetry to be on. Then axis is where you choose the axis and the direction of the symmetry. So like when positive x to negative x is selected, the topology is cut and filled between those axes. Okay, now all we have to do is click submit. You can see over here it says the job was posted successfully. We can open the job monitor to see all our jobs here. And this one we just submitted is scheduled. Then it computes and it'll let you know when it's complete. This whole time while you're waiting, you can still work. Everything doesn't need to come to a complete standstill like with the regular retopologize. You can check the job details here if you click on the job. It gives you the file path it's saved to, computation time and memory usage which are really useful. So once it's done processing, you can import the new model And there you go, you can see that the topology is a lot cleaner and you were able to do this while still carrying on working in the file. There's some loss of detail, but that's fine because I'm still gonna be working on this and refining details anyway. The cool thing is that you can also submit a bunch of jobs to process at once. So you could retopologize a few different things or try some different retopo settings on the same mesh because it's happening on a remote server, it's not taxing your own system. And you can submit up to 50 free jobs per month. That's a calendar month in Maya 2026. So give it a whirl if you haven't yet. So make sure to like the video, share it if you found it useful, and subscribe to keep up to date with other useful videos and learn more stuff. Because who wouldn't want to? Mm -hmm.